It's hot, Seth, it's hot. I think it's 97 a day, humidity's like 1,006%. I think it's supposed to heat index be like 105, 106. Give it 20 minutes and it'll be 100% gnats too. So, good times. The planter has been sitting here ready to plant since May the 3rd. So it's been sitting here for almost 70 days. Now it's the first time we're able to plant. 70 days, that's how much rain we've had. About the time you get ready to dry out to where you can do something, it rains again. We've got spots in this field we will not be able to plant. Uh, we're planting the dry spots. It's July the 12th, obviously that's a problem. It's late. The calendar is our enemy, so we're planting around the wet spots. Something on part of the acres is better than nothing on all of them, so that's what we're gonna do. It is what it is. We're having to hair it, we're losing our cover crops, we're losing, you know, some of our uh, soil tilt, et cetera, um, you know, that we had. We're going to lose moisture because we're hairing it. You know, the cover crops will break down faster now. Uh, we don't have the shading from the cover crops, but more importantly, we don't have the sunshine for the last 60 days to help develop this crop in the longest days of the year. So we've had to plant a variety that uh, obviously would still fit within the season that we have remaining. We do have a long season. So we're planting a determinant soybean here, uh, group five progeny bean. Uh, these are some beans that actually Dave Hula treated for me. Um, they've got the Rim Pro Plus. So if they yield bad, I'm gonna blame him. It won't have anything to do with the fact that I planted them late and got late. We're gonna blame it on the seed treatment and the fact that he handled them. And either, either he's gonna give me the Midas touch or we're just gonna talk bad about him next year. <laughs> so. It can't be anything I'm doing. It's gotta be the man that put them in the bag. You know what I mean? The last 60 days, we should've been worried about spraying fungicides and insecticides, controlling pests, not when are we gonna get the plant. I mean, we're at the point now that we're planting beans. We should've been totally food planting by May, the end of May. Here it is, mid-July. These, these beans would've been, you know, close to waist high by now, you know, setting fruit setting pods and instead we're planting and next two weeks we'll be picking, you know, shelling corn. So we're trying to get it replanted behind that as well. So it's it's not ideal and it is absolutely frustrating. Some of it were planted related issues and then some of it, you know, obviously was the weather. So when it was go time and we could run, we had planter issues and that's not ideal. Um, but now the, the issues with the planter have gone away because we had to run a harrow, and hopefully we won't have any more issues. Hey, you got some defomer? You open these? Take the lid off of it, make sure it's ready to pour in, and then you're gonna see there's another product on the top there. It's methylated seed oil. We're gonna need uh, two gallons. gigantic sinkhole right over here, about 30 foot in diameter. It drained this lake in a matter of about three to four days. Pretty unnerving knowing that 50 acres of water, 10 to 15 foot deep, went into the earth with all the fish associated with it. Where did they go? I mean, obviously they went in the aquifer or something, but pretty unnerving knowing that you're standing right next to it or riding next to it. Makes you conscientious about how vulnerable we really are. for rain. This is a dry land, non-irrigated field, and we're going to pray for rain. I mean, it's one of those deals that, uh, you know, we're at Mother Nature's mercy. Uh, we got a short window to try to get it planted. Uh, starting Saturday for the next 10 to 12 days, we're forecasting 60 to 80 percent chance of rain every day. So we're not out of the woods. We're just trying to get it in. Hopefully it don't drown as we're planting it. This should be flowering, you know, in 45 to 50 days and trying to set pods and, you know, we'll start getting into when we could have some tropical storms and hurricanes. But we have seen it very dry in August. Just depends on those paths and what happens. So we're rolling the dice. Hopefully we won't have an issue. We'll see. It was 
so wet for so long, we've already had one tropical storm come this way and dump 11 inches on us on one farm, 13 on another. We get 45 to 60 inches of annual rainfall, but that does not always come necessarily when, when we want it. All that came at one time. So, you know, not good. Wet, 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 wet. I work, I work all the time. As you well know, you know we'll be harvesting the next couple of weeks. Um, can't wait to get that over with and get another one planted. Uh, it's been a challenging year, not fun. But I don't like to make excuses. Put our best foot forward. We don't give up very easily. And you know we'll see what our yields are. Pretty good corn out there, but good is relative. And Mr. Swanson is real good. And Mr. Hula, not quite as good. So we'll see. God has made a way for us. He's helped us. And, um, you know, this too shall pass. For over 65 years, Brandt has been helping growers achieve better results. We bring the very best plant health and fertilizer solutions to the farm. Through research and innovation, we help growers implement new practices that improve the quality an abundance of food, fuel, and fiber around the world. Brant, professional agriculture. Visit brant.co for more information. So we're driving out to one of our no-till fields here. I do like no-tilling. You know, we don't have a lot of help on our farm. You know, we have a lot of manure and we like to work our manure in the ground. No tilling would really be nice just for the, the labor. We don't have a lot of labor to go in and work the ground. You know, we've not been in this field for two weeks. Maybe good, maybe bad, I don't know. Time will tell. Was at the hefty uh, field day up at uh, Sioux Falls. Everybody was there except Matt. Kind of ran around with David the most. From what David was saying, he had some issues. He had some green snap. Randy was talking about being wet. You know, Dan really didn't say too much about weather. Tweedy was uh, saying he's dry, but I don't know how you can be dry with 15 feet of 5 to 8 percent organic matter dirt there. So I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see here. We're looking at one of our no-till fields. Just kind of curious to see what kind of disease. This actually only had one shot of fungicides on it. We just uh, stop here. Uh-oh. Mr. Tweedy, you could be in trouble. Let's pull a couple of these out here. We've got a little, little pollination, but like I said, it was pollinating through that 95 degree daytime, 83, 84, nighttime. Pretty happy with it. I'm looking at the milk line, and it's not started to move yet, so it's got a lot of size to put on there yet. I believe it'll be enough here to beat on Tweety Bird a little bit again. You know, maybe if we beat him this year, he'll get off the Twitter and and be humble. <laughs> Who's Matt Swanson? No. I just don't understand why he thinks it's his category. You know, if you're David or Randy and you win, I call it their category, but a guy that hasn't won, well, I don't know how he farms. Uh, I just know his dirt's deep. He don't have the flooding. I just don't know why he hasn't broke 400 bushel yet. He should. You know, I'm sure he has some issues. I don't know what they would be, but <laughs> I'm just I'm sure he's got issues somehow, some way. And I hope he does good for his sake, because I'm getting tired of whooping him. <laughs> no, I never get tired of whooping him. I see kind of a feud brewing between Tweety Bird and Zeus. I don't know if Tweety's got huge balls or he just ain't that smart, but I don't think you call out somebody that is that good. I'm not getting in the middle of that feud. I hate to go against Randy, but he's in a different area of farming. 
his soles are lighter, there's no doubt. You know, we all know that the heavier the soils are, the harder it is to move nutrients up and down the soil profile. He has issues, we have issues. Uh, I don't want to farm down there, and I, like I said, I don't think he wants to farm up here. Well, that's why everybody in our area lays tile where he runs pivots. We have sprayer blight. So every time I come across here, I gotta stop, because this is where a train hit me two years ago. Thank God he just hit my wide drop frame. Everything else is okay. Could have been another foot further, he'd have caught the main frame of it, and then we'd have problems in. This field out here actually really didn't miss a beat all year. That's where you can make up for a lot less kernels by having really heavy corn. And I think would be pushing 300 bushel corn over there. That would be needed. Your height is, like I said, just as level as level can be. No abortion, just a little tip back. Didn't pollinate. Not a lot of rows around, not real long, but them kernels are gonna be really, really big. You know, yield potential, is, you know, this should make 300 bushel pretty easy. And all this is on 200 pounds of nitrogen that we put down. So we got our soil, the microbial activity, good enough that it's, that it's creating a lot of this for us. You know, about every year we can raise our yields and our tissue samples go up with less nitrogen. And the only way you can do that is your soil profile is getting better and better. 200 pounds of nitrogen, grow 300 bushel corn, I'll take that all day. That's the whole key. Less inputs, more yield. Oh, it's gonna be good corn. It pollinated good. Plants healthy. Still packing bushels on. That's that's what we're after. The pollination we can't help through the heat, but we can feed it good enough to keep it from aborting. Look at how short these corn plants are. I understand it's out here catching all the sunlight, but it just goes to show you, you don't need a great big tall plant to put a, a nice size ear on. Island. Put some water in these. This is real sweet corn straight from the garden. I just need a gallon of sniper. So we hear the secret, throwing good corn. Let's make some little Mountain Dew, Mr. Hula. So secret's out, we're gonna try. Uh oh. And that is the secret to grow 400 bushel corn. Thank you, David. All right, let's go. This whole field at one time this year was underwater at some point. Good thing about it is this field's big enough that we can, sure to God, find five acres of really good corn out of here. But it's kind of wet in here. If we get over much further, we're gonna get into water damage. I can feel it uh, squatting a little bit. So here's a little wet spot, you know, where water sit. Let me spray in some peanuts. It generally makes a pretty good corn crop. But, um, this is in North Florida, pretty sandy soils have not grown corn on this farm. Pan in front of us. Look at the sand that's in this driveway. That tells you how sandy this soil is. It is like sugar sand, like you would go to the beach. Have it between your toes, as Jimmy Buffett would say. We can make 300 bushel corn in the southeast, and other farmers making 300 bushel corn in the southeast. The Midwest needs to step up the game. Dan, when we show our yields where we had trees last year, you got water. You're one of the guys in the Midwest that's in this contest that has water. When I show some yields where we had trees last year, if we beat you, shame on you. If we beat you where there was pine trees last year, shame on you. That won't be good. You will never hear the end of it, my friend. Oak trees in 2017, beat Dan Lipkiss 2018. That's what I can't wait to show. We'll see what you got. I'm your Huckleberry. Can you blow 
all the girls a kiss. Blow them a kiss. Good. Now that's winking at them. Blow them a kiss. Say, Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> Say, hey, baby. Hi, baby. <laughs> Daddy's man. This is just corn. Sorry. If it's Dave Hula, it's just corn. If it's Matt Swanson, it's probably the best he's ever seen. We're gonna walk in, but it's gonna be thick as a son of a gun from here to there. I'll stay in close. Marco! Marco! Hold on. Where'd you go? You act like you've never walked in corn before. Just stick on my butt. Who was whining there? Uh, as you can see, we're on a pivot track. A little easier to walk through. Oh yeah. We walked through here with cameras and I could hear leaves breaking and tripping and everything else. I, I threw up in my mouth like six times listening to you guys break leaves and break plants over. I had those named, by the way. I heard Dave Hula talk and Dave Hula told me, he says, you know, on Renwood Farms, it just ain't gonna happen for somebody to beat me. This year, David, his son may actually beat him from what I'm hearing. Um, he's had a few weather woes. Yeah, he just told me a while ago, he's, he's pissed. It is what it is. We've got it at 36,040, 44, 48,052, and we even put a little bit of 60,000 for David Hula. Don't know that we're gonna ring the bell, but we can go in here and pull a couple of ears back. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna lose any of these kernels. I'm, I'm upset that we got dent. You know, this is what we try to prevent. This is what corn looks like everywhere. Everybody's corn dents, except the guys that know that they can prevent it. So that's what we're trying to do is prevent it. Um, me and David talk about it all the time. You know, we feel like we're getting a significant bushel increase from preventing that dent. That's, that's pretty substantial. With the weather we've had, I just didn't see it happen, and I was correct. That much rain in that quick a period of time, it just it took a toll on our fertility. So, this is stink bug damage. This is why we spray insecticides so many times with our fungicides, trying to prevent stink bug damage. I did not do a very good job preventing stink bugs. Like I said, this is 56 to 60,000 plant population. We're gonna get 37, 38 out of these. So you do 18 times 38 times 56,000. Um, that's pretty good corn. It'll be worth picking. Maybe we can pay the bills. Hopefully we'll be harvesting you know, five to seven days after black layer. So I would say two weeks or less, we should be sticking the nose of a combine in here checking moisture, seeing where we are. But all in all, you know, not a bad corn crop. I mean, I'm optimistic that, you know, we'll post some respectable numbers. Hopefully they'll be good enough to beat Mr. Swanson. All right, fellas, I've been with you all day. You've been in my way, you slowed me down all day. Got to get out of here and got a long day tomorrow. Got a little boy got to go to play with. Get him a bath and put him to bed. Corn don't look so hot here, but I think we got some pretty good corn out in the middle of this field. The June flood that we had, it was not a big flood, but it backed the river up about four or five times. That low swag that we'll be going into, there was about four foot of water in there for, oh, about 10, 11 days. So all this down here, actually, the water comes off the railroad tracks, come down here from basically that low swag on up this way was underwater. This is quite a bit lower than that up there. So as you can see, we have tons and tons of biological activity in our soil. See all these little mounds? That's uh, earthworms. You know, we don't base hardly any of our yield off of our soil samples because this field here should have enough phosphate for a while. You know, it goes back to the tissue samples. They, they normally don't lie. They're, they're pretty well telltale. And you don't see hardly any residue. That kind of tells you that our uh, soil microbial activity is really, really healthy, that we have really good soil to, to break down all this residue. It'll be good corn down here yet really happy with the protection we've got from Tribapro this year. That's Syngenta. I don't like how tall it is again. That is our limiting factor. We just grow too tall of corn. There's only so much sunlight that can get into a plant. 
a big tall stalk does no good for you as far as I'm concerned because if we had every stalk this big right next to each other, there would be the same amount of sunlight in there. You're not feeding that great big tall stalk. You know, it takes nutrients. It keeps more heat in. Taller corn, you know, it takes longer for it to come up through the canopy. We see a lot of guys uh, on the internet that have been backing off populations. You know, I'm not to say next year that we don't try a high yield plot. It makes sense, give the plants more room so you'd have more of a mining area for nutrients. And you got one plant with basically twice the room catching sunlight. You know, I just, I don't know, it's something new to us. So I heard about Randy's challenge that uh, if he beats us, a shame on us because he cleared out some ground there and you know, that was virgin dirt. Yeah, it's, you can grow pretty good corn on that. Problem is out in the Midwest, there's not a whole lot of that dirt out there. And the reason why you can grow better corn on that is because you don't have all the leftover chemicals. You don't have the disease pressures. Most acres around in the Midwest are farmed and have been farmed for a long time. You know, I'm not saying his way's easier than ours, but it's just two totally different worlds. So I'd kind of have to disagree with what he says on there. Growing 300 bushel corn is not as easy as what he says. Anyway, let's go look at some corn. There's probably uh, 40,000 plants here. We have a little bit of tip back to which we did not see abortion that we did not have at that other field. You know, now you can see through here, all the corn laying over root lodge snapped. I mean, this will be one of our very first, if not the very first field we harvest, just to get this corn up out of the ground before uh, it does go completely flat. As soon as it black layer, we're gonna be in here shelling. You know, I, I think we're just kind of limited to some things that no matter what we do, we can't fix. You know, I see uh, Tweety is on 15 inch rows. The problem with 15 inch rows around here, you know, we'll stay three to four degrees warmer at night than what we do with 30 inch rows. So, you know, I would wish we could go to 15 inch rows, but that's probably not an option here until we start getting really short corn. Then that would be a whole different game changer for for our area here the secret to uh, like david and randy growing that corn they get you know they get sunshine if you can get sunshine during the day and able to cool that corn down to 65 degrees at night i mean that's a pretty good recipe to grow pretty good corn two guys are world records and the other three guys ain't too bad themselves in 2017 this was our highest yielding plots about right through here where we're running is where we pulled our big numbers last year. So this is the problem running at night. You see our window starting to fog up. So I don't know how long we could run. Naturally, we don't do all of our acres this way, but we uh, try to keep her pretty healthy all the way through so she finishes good. This is still, for us, being able to spray herself, we will still make money on this late pass. You know, that's the bottom line. You still gotta make money on it. You just don't do it to be doing it. I think we've got three entries in this field for the contest. You know, it's pretty well in, in Mother Nature's hands here. You know, we pretty well did what we could do. Swanson, this is what I'm gonna do to you. Ah!